Uh, it's a real pleasure and honor to give a talk. So I will talk about the void busyness equations, uh, or more generally about uh, uh, the basic models uh, that govern the motion of incompressible fluid. So uh, the talk is about a family of equations, um, like uh, the basic three-dimensional incompressible Euler equations, which uh, I have written here, and a number of uh, two-dimensional models uh, such as the surface quasi geostrophic equation, the business equations, or the inviscid porous medium equations. So these equations uh, all have uh, the following common features. Um, they have a good local uh, well posedness um, in uh, classes of functions uh, that are at least C1 alpha or uh, with better regularity. They're conservative. They have a special transport structure or a Lagrangian description. And uh, if we write the equations for the gradients, uh, they obey uh, uh, equations with uh, um, stretching uh, terms that are non-vanishing, that are quadratic and non-local. Um, also, they all have uh, Biocatomida type uh, uh, theorem. And uh, another major uh, feature for these uh, problems is, is that uh, we don't know um, the global regularity uh, or the blow up for these equations. So let's uh, first consider a prototypic, the prototypical example, the surface quasi geostrophic equations in the case uh, uh, without boundaries. So these are nonlinear, non-local active scalar equations for the temperature theta, uh, where uh, the um, velocity u is related to theta via a risk transform. Uh, actually, uh, the vector of risk transform rotated uh, by uh, pi over two in the case of two dimensions. We all know that uh, in, the, the, in the case of the whole space, the risk transform has uh, an explicit uh, uh, formula uh, in terms of uh, uh, an explicit kernel that is uh, a singular operator of order uh, zero. And uh, we have that uh, the velocity is divergence free. And also we have that the L2 norm of theta is conserved and because there is transform is an isometry now two, we have that uh, uh, the kinetic velocity is uh, conserved uh, for this equation. So uh, here are the following analogies with the 3D incompressible Euler equations. So we have that the equations are conservative, they're actually Hamiltonian. We have that the grad perp of theta uh, plays exactly the same role as uh, the vorticity in the 3D uh, Euler equations. And uh, here I have written the corresponding stretching equations. So for the three-dimensional Euler equations, uh, we have uh, the stretching equation for the vorticity uh, with uh, 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 the abuse of art law for recovering the fluid velocity from the vorticity, which is uh, um, with one derivative more regular as uh, 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 the expression uh, for the SQG, uh, which obeys the same type of uh, stretching equation. Um, we also have available a Biocatumida type theorem, which I have written for the SQG equation, which states that uh, the solution uh, doesn't blow up uh, if and only if uh, the time integral of grad perp theta in L infinity is finite. So uh, here is a typical strategy of uh, how to uh, construct uh, local solutions. Uh, local solutions, for instance, one can consider uh, approximation that uh, 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 respects the transport st structure. For instance, this can be a array or Galerkin approximation. Uh, one typically takes sufficiently many derivatives in order to close the a priori estimates uh, in some uh, space uh, with a Banach algebra structure um, that is uh, adapted to the nonlinearity. 
And uh, if the a priori estimates are uniform with respect to this approximation, uh, um, and uh, one can pass to the limit, then uh, uh, this gives us uh, the construction. So here is, uh, for instance, uh, a more general um, uh, strategy that uh, works for all the type of equations that we consider that I stated in the first slide. Um, so uh, for all these equations, if we consider uh, the equations for the derivative, uh, which you can think here as being uh, G, uh, then the derivative will obey this kind of transport equation with a given transport velocity V, which is uh, smooth and divergence free. And uh, F will represent the nonlinearity, uh, which typically depends uh, on uh, G and its uh, lower order derivatives. Due to the Lagrangian structure, so if we call eta uh, the Lagrangian map corresponding to V, uh, then we know that G composed with eta will obey an ODE that is driven by F composed with eta. So we can easily obtain that the LP norms of G obey the following uh, integral inequality. So we have that the LP norm at time t is bounded by the LP norm initially, uh, plus the time integral of the nonlinearity in LP. And this is true for any p between one and infinity. Uh, so for all our models, if we take uh, p, the exponent p to be strictly greater than dimension, uh, then uh, we can typically estimate the nonlinearity in LP by some constant uh, times some power. Uh, so usually uh, is superlinear power of the LP norm of G. And uh, this is enough to establish uh, local existence and uniqueness. So uh, let's uh, illustrate that uh, on the SQG example. So let's start with uh, looking at the stretching equation uh, with the danger stretching term on the right hand side. Um, if we take a derivative of this equation and if we call uh, G to be the matrix of second order derivatives of theta, then we obtain uh, the following transport uh, uh, looking equation for G, where the nonlinear the nonlinear term on the right hand side uh, are of uh, look like uh, products of uh, U derivatives of U and derivatives of theta, where they are uh, exactly total of three derivatives falling on U uh, and theta all together, and at either one derivative. Uh, uh, falls on theta or two derivatives falls fall on theta. So um, uh, if uh, we take the sub sub of exponent p to be strictly greater than two, uh, then uh, we have the sub of embedding of w2p in w1 infinity. And uh, uh, using uh, the classical results for the, the risk transform, uh, we can estimate the nonlinearity in LP by a quadratic expression of G in L2. And uh, this, of course, uh, uh, establishes a good local existence and uniqueness result for SQG in W2P uh, with P strictly greater than 2. And this is the best one can do. Actually, it is known that the surface quasi geostrophic equation is not well posed in W22. So once uh, we establish a good local existence and uniqueness, one can uh, think of uh, which quantity has to be uh, uh, controlled in, over, uh, in order for one to be able to extend the existence of the solution beyond the local existence time. Uh, so um, in the case of the SQG, um, in the nonlinear term, uh, instead of using the solve of embedding, uh, we can estimate the first order derivatives uh, directly in L infinity. And using the integral equation, one can deduce that the LP norm of G is bounded by the LP norm initially times an exponential bound of the time integrals of the sum of the gradient U of L infinity and the gradient theta in L infinity. And now we don't have the boundedness of risk transform in L infinity, but we can use Brazil's Goal type of inequality 
uh, to control the L infinity norm of the gradient of U in terms of the gradient of theta and pay with some logarithmic correction of the LP uh, norm of G, which uh, if we uh, um, use in the previous uh, inequality, we obtain the following uh, expression in, in terms of double exponential of the time integral of gradient of theta in L infinity. And now it is clear that if we control this time integral, uh, if this integral is finite, then the OP norm remains bounded and uh, one can uh, extend the solution beyond the time t. So in this case, the bio katomida quantity to control is the time integral of gradient of theta in L infinity. Um, so for all the equations, so the SQG, the Businesque, uh, the inviscid porous medium, this is as far as uh, one can go. Um, and uh, for uh, these models, the finiteness of the Biocatomida quantity, it is not known. So next, uh, we are going to discuss briefly different types of approximations. In order to have global existence of smooth solutions uh, uh, with the present technology, we need to consider approximations. And uh, here are um, three very uh, well-known and useful approximations. The first one is the viscous approximations. When we add uh, a dissipative term, you can think of terms of uh, Laplacian. Uh, here, the prototypical example is the navier stocks uh, for which we don't know global regularity. And I think that uh, uh, with, uh, for what is known right now, that one needs to add uh, negative Laplacian to the power of five fourths in order to obtain global regularity. Um, however, uh, using this type of approximation changes the type of uh, the equations. Another type of uh, uh, approximation is to use uh, a Lerret type approximation. Uh, with this approximation, the equations, um, um, the, the new equations uh, um, have uh, um, uh, uh, the, the transport uh, uh, structure is uh, preserved, and the only thing that is smoothed out is the transport velocity. Um, so these uh, um, these are very useful. Uh, in numerical approximations and for constructions of weak solutions, as I will illustrate in a second. However, they are not, uh, in most cases, they are not standalone alone models. And uh, the third type of approximation is the void uh, type approximation. So these are conservative and they improve, in a certain sense, uh, the conserved energy. Um, and uh, some some of uh, these approximations uh, rise as standalone models, uh, for instance, in uh, Kelvin void uh, fluids. So let's uh, look a little bit at the Lerret type of uh, approximation on our uh, main uh, uh, example of SQG. So here I have denoted uh, the smoothening operator by J sub epsilon, which is a re regularization of order two alpha. Uh, and uh, they, then I have written the uh, uh, approximated equations uh, where the um, transport velocity is now with two derivatives more regular, uh, with two alpha derivatives more regular. Uh, if uh, uh, alpha is greater or equal than one half, uh, namely, um, so in the case of alpha greater or equal than one half, uh, the system has global smooth solutions. Uh, in the case when alpha is one half exactly, then uh, uh, we regularize uh, uh, the transport velocity precisely with uh, one derivative, which is uh, uh, the critical case. Uh, um, and uh, for this critical exponent, uh, uh, we have that, uh, that uh, 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 this model is uh, uh, basically the 2, 2D Euler equations in vorticity form. And uh, again, the global uh, regularity is known. 
In the case of alpha strictly late, uh, strictly less than one half, uh, even uh, if we assume that alpha is negative, for instance, alpha uh, between negative one half and one half, then it is known only the global existence of weak solutions. Of course, uh, there is no uniqueness known, and one uh, and uh, also it is not known by the regularity of the solutions. Um, now, regarding the 2D Businesk system, uh, which I have written here, so uh, we we have uh, 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 Euler equation uh, for the fluid velocity coupled to the temperature uh, equation uh, for theta. Um, this is a 2D reduced version of the full three-dimensional viscous and diffusive uh, Businesk system. Um, we have that. Uh, uh, this uh, system uh, has uh, a classical local existence and uniqueness of smooth solutions. Uh, and one can uh, show that using the same strategy as uh, the one that I did uh, at the beginning of the lecture and uh, for um, the SQG. The Bill Katumaida quantity here to control is the time integral of uh, the gradient theta in L infinity. And uh, we know that uh, for this type of equations, uh, uh, the viscous uh, regularizations are very well studied. Um, so um, uh, for instance, uh, even in the case when we have uh, uh, negative Laplacian added to the fluid equation, which, which makes it to be the Navier-Stokes equation, or viscous uh, regularization added to the temperature equation, which makes it uh, um, a temperature diffusion equation. Um, also, uh, there are numerous studies in uh, when we add partial, horizontal, or vertical, or fractional regularizations to uh, uh, either or both of the equations. Um, the blow-up problem uh, for this uh, problem is the, break round, back, the, the breakdown of smoothness in finite time starting from smooth initial data. Uh, the, uh, this is known in the case of the compressible 2D or 3D uh, Euler equations. However, uh, it's of course an open problem for the incompressible Euler equations and related models. I have um, written here the 3D axisymmetric equations in cylindrical coordinates. Uh, in terms of the radio, the, the Z coordinate and the angular uh, variable. So here the axis of symmetry is the, the Z axis and uh, in terms of the radio velocity, vertical velocity, and azimuthal uh, component of the velocity, we can see that this equation uh, look uh, very similar to the um, uh, to the two D business system. So uh, we have that uh, um, uh, if we denote by theta the quantity r uh, v phi. Uh, this uh, satisfies the pure transport, then we have the kind of, inc of incompressibility condition, and uh, then we have a, uh, an equation that resembles Euler. Um, so this is uh, if we take theta to be rv phi squared. And if you uh, look for r um, that is uh, away from zero, uh, in the case of R equals one, we obtain precisely the Businesk equations. So for this uh, type of equations, uh, Eugenie uh, proved blow up uh, in the class C1 alpha, in which of course we know the local well poseness of the, the equations. Then in the case uh, um, with boundary, uh, Eugenie and Jong proved blow up uh, in uh, a domain uh, with a corner. So in the first case here, we have that the blow up uh, occurs exactly uh, at the axis of symmetry. 
uh, in the domain with corner, the blow up occurs at the corner. And recently, uh, Chen and Hao uh, uh, proved uh, using computer um, uh, um, uh, based proof uh, that uh, uh, um, uh, th there is a blow up uh, at the boundary at R equals one. Um, so, uh, of course, uh, if we consider the system uh, in the case without boundaries, uh, the blow up problem is uh, open. So, uh, what is next uh, is uh, uh, a little bit talking about the void approximation uh, in general terms and then applying it to the business equations. So, let's consider an abstract system. So we have u sub t equals to some nonlinearity in a Hubert space H, where the nonlinearity has uh, the cancellation property uh, in the space H. Basically, n u is orthogonal to u. Then the void approximation is of the type we regularize the time derivative of u by uh, an operator uh, identity plus epsilon a where A is self-adjoint positive operator in the Hilbert space H. Um, then uh, formally, uh, we know that instead of having the conserved uh, quantity uh, U in H squared, uh, the system has a, a improved uh, conserved quantity, uh, so with, uh, which is U uh, H squared plus epsilon a to the one half u in h square. Um, so these type of approximations are, uh, they have the same steady states and this is uh, very important uh, when we study the long time behavior of the forced equations. Uh, they don't introduce boundary layers because they don't modify the homogeneous Dirichlet boundary conditions and they are conservative uh, with improved conservative law and time reversible. However, uh, they do not respect the transport structure. Um, subcritical uh, void approximation um, have been used for the 3D Euler equ equation with uh, A being the negative Laplacian. And recently, uh, the long time behavior of void approximation uh, has been used to construct uh, steady solutions to the 3D magneto hydrostatic uh, equations. So the, these are very useful, uh, and we are going to illustrate them to the uh, case of uh, the two dimensional business equations. We are going to take uh, the critical uh, power, which is uh, regularizing with uh, the negative Laplacian to the power one half, which out uh, the node from now on with uh, lambda. Uh, then the system is formed by velocity equation uh, with uh, um, a pro uh, with the improved uh, uh, regularity on the time derivative uh, and divergence free condition uh, and a temperature equation uh, that is modified uh, uh, for theta. Um, we consider the system. Uh, for simplicity on the torus. And if we denote the curl uh, as uh, usual, then uh, we can uh, write the corresponding vorticity equation. Uh, uh, of course, U is related to uh, vorticity via the Biot-Savart law, and uh, we can close the system in terms of omega and theta. And this is what we refer to as the void business equations. So here is uh, one of our main results uh, uh, about the global regularity. This is something that we had initiated with my postdoc uh, uh, Jing Yang Shu last year. So if we take uh, uh, a Sobolev uh, exponent S strictly greater than one, and if we take initial data in HS, and uh, any time uh, t arbitrary, uh, then there exists a unique solution of the two devoid business uh, equations, which remains uh, in HS uh, for all time. Um, 
Okay, so what will be the strategy of the proof? So first we'll discuss uh, the local existence and uniqueness in HS. Then we are going to exploit the basic energy structure. We are going to show the global existence first when the exponent S is uh, strictly greater than one and less or equal than three halves. Uh, then we are going to uh, establish what is the bill cut on my that uh, quantity that has to be controlled. And we are going to propagate the regularity for exponents that are larger than three halves. Um, then the second result is uh, uh, passing to the limit in the re regularization. So notice that here uh, we need slightly more regular initial data for the temperature equation with one derivative more than in the global regularity result. Um, so if we assume that we have a solution to the Businesk uh, system, uh, which is in the same uh, class, HS, uh, uh, HS plus one, um, uh, that exists uh, for uh, on the time interval zero t, then the solution of uh, the void businesk uh, uh, with the same initial data conver converges to the solution to the businesk uh, system in the following space L infinity h minus one times L two. Um, so here the more regularity. Uh, uh, as the, the, the slightly with one derivative more regularity is really needed uh, because one needs to uh, rely on uniform estimates of the gradient of the business temperature in L infinity. So, uh, and uh, another uh, result is uh, uh, what happens if uh, we regularize uh, the vorticity and temperature equation uh, um, with, uh, uh, say, uh, uh, operators of order alpha and beta, where the exponents uh, alpha and beta are not negative and are greater or equal than two, we have that alpha is strictly greater than one and beta is greater or equal than two thirds. So this is just to say that one can possibly put less than one uh, derivative on the theta uh, equation, but then one needs to have more than one on the vorticity equation in order to obtain the global regular regularity of the system. Okay, okay so let's start with uh, the local existence. We are going to uh, rewrite um, the 2D void business equations in divergence form um uh, like that and if we have initial data uh, in the class hs for s strictly greater than one uh, then there exists a, a time that depends only on the regularization parameter epsilon and the norms of initial data uh, such that uh, uh, we have uh, the existence of a local solution uh, in the class of l infinity hs so um, first, uh, we uh, um, uh, look at the nonlinearity. So that's the right-hand side of the equation, uh, which is in divergence form. And I have denoted the two terms by n1 and n2. Um, we are going to use that uh, for uh, s strictly greater than 1, hs is a Banach algebra. Uh, also, we are going to use that derivatives uh, are going to commute uh, with this operator. And uh, we have that uh, for S strictly greater than one, HS uh, is embedded in L infinity. Mm -hmm. uh, we were at the point we were uh, looking at the local well poseness for the void business equations. And uh, the first thing was to write the equations in divergence form and uh, to use that uh, the operator commutes with derivatives uh, and uh, um, that uh, the space that we are looking at uh, for S strictly greater than one is a Banach algebra uh, that embeds in L infinity. Uh, moreover, we have that the operator uh, that appears uh, in front of the quadratic and the linear term, uh, the quadratic terms and the linear term is uh, uh, bounded in HS. Uh, so uh, 
using this, we can estimate the nonlinear terms in HS in terms of uh, uh, quadratic expression of the product uh, of u and omega uh, and u and theta and a linear expression in theta. And then using that, uh, there, uh, we have uh, um, a Poincaré inequality. Basically, we control uh, the velocity u in terms of omega. We obtain the following uh, bounds, uh, quadratic bound uh, in omega, linear in theta, and uh, another a quadratic bound in terms of omega and theta. So from here, uh, one can easily show the local uh, existence and uniqueness, uh, for instance, by using a fixed point argument. Uh, and the fact that uh, if you consider the nonlinearities uh, for uh, uh, apply to differences, uh, uh, to, uh, um, so if you consider nonlinearity in, uh, for a difference of omega and theta, uh, you can bound this in terms of a Lipschitz constant, the difference of uh, W1, W2 in theta loc uh, locally. So whenever W1 and W2 are in a bow of HS. Okay, so we have a good local existence and uniqueness. And the next uh, thing is uh, um, to uh, establish sub some basic uh, energy uh, uh, estimates. Uh, so uh, for for this uh, we are going to uh, uh, classically multiply the temperature equation by theta and uh, see that we have uh, a conservation uh, of uh, the L2 plus uh, uh, H2 norm uh, and for the vorticity equation we multiply by vorticity and integrate and uh, we obtain the following uh, evolution equation for the sum of the L2 and H one half norms. So in the right hand side, we have a product of one derivative uh, um, D1 theta and omega, and we are going to uh, distribute one half derivative uh, to omega and use uh, that the half derivative of theta is uh, controlled uh, uh, in H, uh, so uh, theta in H1 is controlled by the square root of uh, in the initial data, uh, which we denoted by A0. So from here, uh, we obtain that uh, uh, omega and theta are a priori bounded in L infinity H1 half, and the bounds depend uh, on the initial data uh, and are linear in time. So now using this information, uh, we are going to est establish the global uh, regularity for S between one and three halves. Um, we are going back to our uh, uh, HS estimates. So, uh, um, and uh, I'm going to uh, show that the main uh, point is to obtain uh, this uh, kind of differential inequality that from here, uh, the global regularity for this uh, exponent as between one and three halves will follow right away. So say that we have the uh, differential inequality star and let's uh, look, uh, um, so using our basic energy structure, we have that uh, omega is control in L infinity H one half, which in terms of velocity, which is one derivative more regular, uh, means that it is control in L infinity H three halves, which is embedded in L infinity H S uh, for S strictly greater than one. And again, uh, from the basic energy estimates, we have that the bounds depend only on the initial data and grow at most linearly in time. So from here, uh, basically, uh, the uh, velocity in H S is controlled. So we know that these norms remain uh, uh, bounded and uh, so this uh, yeah, uh, together with the good local existence and uniqueness uh, in HS uh, um, uh, allows us to extend the solution infinitely in time. Okay, so now how do we prove uh, uh, the inequality star? So here we are going to use the calculus uh, inequality for the product of two functions in HS. 
and uh, we are going to apply to our quadratic nonlinearity non this uh, estimate. Um, so then we obtain uh, the following right hand side. So we have L infinity norm of U uh, plus, uh, times the sum of the HS uh, uh, norms plus uh, sum of L infinity norms of omega and theta times a, uh, HS uh, norm of the velocity plus the linear term theta in HS. And uh, here, the only thing that we're going to use uh, is that uh, for S greater than one, we have the embedding and we can control uh, uh, the L infinity norm of U in terms of HS norm of uh, U and the sum of these two L infinity norms in, ter the, in terms of the corresponding HS norms. And this uh, basically leads to the inequality star. So we have proven so far the global regularity for S between one and three halves. Uh, the next step will be to uh, um, write a bill katumaida type theorem. So um, this is the following uh, statement. We take uh, an exponent strictly greater than one, and uh, we uh, suppose that uh, uh, omega theta is uh, in L infinity HS, uh, a solution to the 2D void, void busyness equations, starting with initial data in HS. Then we claim that the quantity, the Biokatumida quantity to control is the time integral of the L infinity norm of vorticity plus L infinity norm of theta. Um, so if this is controlled, uh, uh, then uh, uh, our solution can be uniquely continued beyond the time of uh, local existence. And of course, there is uh, no uh, blow up at time t. So for this, uh, we go back uh, to the differential inequality from the previous slide. Um, and uh, again, we're going to rely to the basic energy uh, estimate, which tells us that omega and theta um, is in L infinity, they are in L infinity h one half. Uh, and are bounded uh, in terms of initial data and linear in time, um, then we're going to use the embedding of H3 halves in L infinity. And uh, this in particular will imply that the time integral of U in L infinity is controlled. And the only factor that we need to control additionally is the time integral of the sum of the L infinity norms of omega and theta. So this is uh, the short proof. So this is uh, the short uh, uh, idea for the proof of uh, the bio katumaida type result, which tells us that we uh, the only thing that we need to control uh, is uh, the time integral of the sum of the L infinity uh, norms. So uh, now having that, uh, um, let's look at uh, how do we show the global regularity for, for S strictly greater than three halves. We're going to use that we already know the global regularity for S equals three halves, um, and uh, uh, which uh, gives us the a priori bounds uh, for omega and theta in L infinity H three halves. And we are going to use the uh, embedding of H three halves in L infinity so this basically means that we control uh, uh, omega and theta uh, in L infinity uniformly. Uh, and uh, so these are precisely the quantities that we had to control uh, for the bio katumaida uh, result. And from here, the high regularity propagates. OK, so the last thing that I would like to give an idea uh, of the proof is uh, the passing to the limit. Um, so when we pass uh, to the limit in the regu regularization. Um, so here we are going to denote by uh, theta b and u b the solutions to the 2D busyness equations and by theta v and u v the solutions to the 2D void busyness. And we consider the differences. Uh, so u is the difference between the corresponding velocities, and theta is the difference between the corresponding temperatures. And then we write the equations uh, in terms of for uh, u and theta. Okay, so um, 
uh, so uh, these equations are uh, considered with, uh, uh, of course, vanishing initial data. Uh, and uh, the typical thing is to multiply the theta uh, uh, equation by theta and integrate and add these to uh, the uh, equation for the velocity, uh, which is also which is multiplied by u and integrated in space. And from here, um, uh, we uh, need to, so there will be, of course, some nonlinear terms that cancel out. Uh, the, then one needs to control uh, the nonlinear terms. Um, and here we're going to use that uh, for the Boussinesq uh, vorticity uh, we have that is in L infinity HS, that's our assumption, and the uh, Boussinesq temperature was with the one derivative more regular. Um, so this uh, gives us uh, that the corresponding, the gradient of uh, um, Boussinesq velocity, uh, which is uh, uh, with one derivative more regular, is in L infinity, both in space and time. And sim similarly for the gradient of theta B, we have that is uh, bounded uniformly in space and time by a constant. So then if we look at uh, the uh, nonlinear terms that we need to control, um, we can uh, just simply give uh, uh, L to L infinity L to, uh, to these terms and uh, bound them like that. Um, so if we call uh, E to, uh, to be the energy consisting of the L2 norms for U and theta, and uh, then the terms that appear with uh, epsilon. So these are the H1 norms of U and theta. Then we can write evolution equations for this energy. Uh, so uh, from the previous slide, we see that from the nonlinearities, we have this first term. And then there are the terms that involve the time derivatives of um, the uh, uh, theta B and UB which uh, we know how to control using the corresponding Boussinus equation. So from the Boussinus equation, we can obtain that the corresponding vorticity. Uh, um, so in so, uh, using that the uh, vorticity in L infinity HS and the one uh, derivative more regularity uh, on theta B, we can obtain that uh, uh, we control the H one half norms of these quantities. Uh, uniformly uh, by a constant. And then the very last thing is to apply Young's inequality and end up with the evolution equation for the energy. Uh, um, and uh, so this equation together with uh, zero initial data uh, um, implies that when we send epsilon to zero, you have that the energy goes to zero uniformly uh, on uh, finite time intervals. And this basically shows uh, the convergence of uh, the void Boussinesq uh, solution to the Boussinesq solution um, for when epsilon goes to zero uh, in the corresponding norm. Um, so that's all uh, I wanted to say. And uh, I would like to thank you um, for your attention. Thank you very much for the talk. Uh, are there any questions? Yeah, Steve. Uh, so I, I feel like I understood why the inequality required S greater than one, the energy inequality, um, but I didn't get why you needed S less than or equal to three halves. So could you just repeat That's that? That's the point? first part of uh, the proof. So in the first part of the proof, uh, we can easily show the global regularity between strictly between one and three halves included. Uh, but then, uh, uh, after this step, we needed to use uh, more in order to extend this for any s greater than one. So the proof consisted in uh, several uh, steps. Uh, I'm sorry that I needed to break uh, uh, things uh, down and because of the break. Uh, so yes, so it it, uh, it is essential. So the first thing. Uh, 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 it was easy to show the, the first result for s between one and three halves. And then we needed to explore really uh, the energy structure and to obtain a Biokatu-Maida kind of criterion and to show that the corresponding norms uh, that uh, are actually controlled 
and this would allow us to propagate for powers of s greater than three halves.